now uh, there's also this discussion of transferring risk to providers. So um, that probably creates some uh, challenges within the walls of your organization about how to think about risk, both uh, relative to traditional ways, but also with these new emerging um, opportunities. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And also I would just add that um, individual physicians have a pretty good handle on what they're doing, or at least they think they do. But when their risk is tied to what their competitor down the hall is doing, someone who also sees patients, when that is tied to other people over whom you have very little control, um, that can become a real challenge too. And that's where I think you need someone who can coordinate these has some experience with, with risk. Um, after all, uh, risk is, taking on risk, it's, it's not just a gift that you're going to definitely have the benefit without the risk. If there's a risk, there's a very real possibility that a physician or a hospital system, somebody may have to write a check. So speaking of risk, uh, what we've all been hearing in the news lately is about the SDR, the Sustainable Growth Rate uh, Policy, and potentially, I guess, a, a fix for something that's been going on for a number of years. Um, any thoughts on sort of what the uh, SGR uh, uh, solution, if you will, will, will ultimately mean for providers, for payers, well, for the public? Yeah, for the public. I don't, I don't know that it means much for the public, but certainly for physicians, it, it, it means an end to this scam that's been going on for uh, over a decade. Um, but think about the conversation that we've just had which should, in my opinion, be part of the discussion around the SGR, because uh, the notion is you, you're, you're, going to, you're going to ignore the deflator on, on the, on, on the uh, fee schedules in exchange for moving physicians, all physicians, far more rapidly into various forms of value-based payment, which essentially means transference of risk. And um, that the discussion we just had about the, the, the ability to understand that financial risk, the ability to distinguish the insurance risk from the performance risk. Um, that should be part and parcel of the discussion around the SGR because it's not just about ignoring a price deflator. It's also about modifying the way, fundamental way in which the incentives are going to flow for the Medicare program. And if you're going to do that, then, then let's, let's again have an honest discussion about it. And one question I had, Atif, is if, if at, at BID, so does this, uh, I'm sure the CFO, at, at that level, understands the distinction between uh, the tail of a distribution that's creating a lot of noise in, in, in the overall results of the ACO um, versus what the physicians, but ha has that message in any way um, been communicated to the staff? Uh, do people really understand, I mean, do the physicians and the clinicians understand this? Yeah, I think that people understand that we're in an ACO. I think the average physician understands on a theoretical basis what that means, that we're held responsible for the, the total spending for a patient population. Yet where the disconnect is, I have no idea, and if I have 20 patients on my service right now, who's in an ACO, who's not in an ACO, and I don't see any material change in the way I deliver care to either within the patients who are in an ACO or not, and how I delivered care five years ago. I should really emphasize, I'm not sure that's a bad thing or a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that we're just delivering care that we used to, and there's things happening on the back end that are more about delivering better care and decreasing costs. It's just interesting to see that um, it, there is this disconnect. And we have a lot of patients at risk through both Medicare ACO. We're above the majority of our patients now. We have some risk. 